Hey, hey, YouTubers and lovers of all things budget cars and bikes, and not so budget car bikes as well. Um, I've done it again. I've kind of gone out and spent way too much money on a bike. Um, even though this channel is all about kind of budget bikes and cars, but I just I couldn't resist it. I'll tell you the story in a second. Um, this is a 2012 Triumph Speed Triple 1050. Now, yes, I have had one of these, and yes, I have made a, a review on it. Um, yes, I do love them. I do love my Triumphs. You know that. Um, if you've watched any of my videos, you'll know I'm more into my uh, sort of triples and twins than I am my inline fours. Um, the story goes: if you've seen, which I'm thinking you probably have now if you've seen the video on the Kawasaki Z1000 SX that I had the 2011 I did sell that um, purely because I just couldn't stand it wasn't doing what I wanted it to do I mean it looked beautiful it was it drew a lot of attention it rode nice um, but it wasn't for what I wanted it at the time you know I wanted something I could cruise around on for maybe two or three hours at a time if I wanted to you know get jump on and go up to Bristol see some people up there you know 120 miles I didn't feel like I'd really do that on the SX purely because I don't like 6,000 revs at motorway speeds for like two hours at a time I mean it's just a personal thing the, the bike was beautiful don't get me wrong I'm not slagging it off I really enjoyed having it um, it was an experience, but I really wanted the, I did mention it in a couple of other videos, I really did want the Ducati Multistrada 1200S. Still can't afford it. That's the downside of that, you know, because the Kawasaki was around about four grand, which is pretty much my top budget. Um, I mean, some people can still consider that to be budget, I guess, but uh, for me, that's quite a lot of money. Um, so, lo and behold, I sold the SX. I went to see a Ducati Multistrada, decided that was really the bike I wanted, but it sold that night. So, I mean, I can, as I said, I can only buy something that's within my price range. That was borderline within my price range, but more importantly, it was local, so I could go, actually go and see it. Um, and get a feel for the bike apart from just watching the reviews and maybe seen a few pictures that kind of stuff I've actually sat on it I've heard one I really do like them um, and I may well get one in the future but this isn't about that this is about another Triumph Speed Triple 1050 2012 this time so a year newer than the last one and as you can see in this most amazing black and white kind of color scheme here I don't think I've seen a lot of the Speed Triple 1050s in white um, I've seen a couple of street triples, I think, but not the Speed Triple 1050. Um, now, the, it's not going to be a great long video, to be honest, guys, because I've already done a video on this bike. I just want to let you know what I'm up to and show you this bike because it, it is stunning. The story behind it is that there was a guy selling it, basically, on eBay. I kind of got in contact with him because the price was 4995 I got in contact with him thinking maybe I could get it a little bit cheaper, etc., etc., now, the only issue with it really is it had a clock change uh, in 2016 and the story goes that the original owner had the instruments uh, kind of stolen because apparently the instrument cluster here, if you just take out a couple of these Allen bolts here, it just pops out, it's on little rubber mounts and it just pops out and they're quite common to be stolen. I'd not heard of this before, I've got to say, I thought the instrument cluster was kind of coded to the bike. Um, I'm still wondering whether that's the case. Anyway, it was supplied by um, a Triumph dealer called Jack Lilly up in London. They have a record of all the servicing up to the point where it had a clock change. Um, but they, there is no record of an insurance claim. The bike is purely uh, as it is. I mean, there's no HPI claims on it as in the respect that there's no insurance claims on it, no accidents recorded, no money owning, nothing like that. It's completely clean. I, you know, I spent a tenner to do that. So, but there wasn't any paperwork to say who'd fitted the new clocks, where they were supplied from, all that kind of stuff. All it does is basically go to I mean, just under 6,000 miles and then it goes to 31 miles on the MOT, at which point that tallies in with the paperwork that I've got that says that the clocks were changed. Now, I kind of, for about two or three weeks, I hummed and hard about this thinking, has this been in an accident? Is that why the clocks were changed and they just didn't claim it on the insurance? Um, I don't know. I still don't know, if I'm honest. But I took a chance on it because it was 4995 and because of this issue that couldn't be proven either way, I ended up getting this for 4400 quid. which, if you know about Speed Triple 1050, especially this generation, that's cheap. That's bloody cheap. They should be five grand and upwards, really. Um, now, since that clock change, it's done another 7,000 miles. So it's now on about 13,000 miles, which, yep, yeah, that's fine for me. You know, I mean, it's seven years old now, getting on for eight years old. So 12,000 miles, that's no problem for me at all. Um, the other thing was it needed a new rear tyre. <laughs> Oddly enough, exactly the same as the black. Um, 1050 triple I had and I've done exactly the same I went onto eBay and I bought a couple of part warns I say I bought a couple because there was a pack 
going. Michelin Pilot 2's Odd eBay, I won the auction for 46 quid, and I figured, all right, okay, well, I'll have matching tyres. In hindsight, these are actually Michelin Pilot 2's, so all I've really got to do is change the back one, which is a bonus, because it's less time at the garage, I can't do it myself, and the front one is uh, perfectly fine. So I've got a spare front one, or I'll sell that on eBay for 20 quid, because it's almost new, um, and I'll recoup some of the money. Um, oh, I should have wiped off this poor little bit of uh, road killer as well. I mean, there's no marks on the bike. It's been designed in this kind of black and white colour scheme. Uh, they also supplied a white one of these, which I assume would mean that was the original. I did try to carbon cover that with the carbon cover sheeting that I've done a couple of jobs on other bikes. Um, I did manage, I mean, this side here, unfortunately, this panel over here, it was pretty badly scratched and scuffed up. Um, I sanded it back as much as I could, and I cover, carbon covered that. That was a bastard to do that little bit there, and I've also done that side. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I, do, I mean, I like the carbon fibre, but I don't like the way that it just doesn't look brilliant. It looks okay, don't get me wrong. I mean, it cost me 10 quid for a massive sheet of this stuff. Still got shitloads of it. Um, I could live with it, but they're only about 20 quid for a new, just this part here off eBay. So I could just take it all off, go back to standard again, keep this kind of flat black and white thing going on. But I'm not sure. Um, seat cal obviously matching with the paintwork, and I'm not sure if you'll see it in this light, but it's got this wicked little sparkle in the paint as well. I really like that. And what else? There's a lot of padding going on as well. There's RNG kind of padding all around here. There's RNG um, frame protectors as well, or bike protectors, crash bungs, whatever you want to call them. And a lot of expensive bits and bobs as well. This MIVI exhaust. Um, I prefer the sound. I mean, I'll start it up in a minute. Hopefully this bike will start up, unlike the Honda VTR, which didn't start. By the way, if uh, you didn't see what I wrote about that, the Honda VTR Firestorm, all it was was the kill switch up here. It's been sat out all winter, and it just got a little bit of moisture in there or got a little bit stiff. I just give it a good whack with my finger like that, and it started. So that was the story behind that. Back to the exhaust. I like the exhaust, this brushed aluminium with a little red accent there as well. I don't know much about MIV or MIV V. I'm, I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that. Um, but I do prefer the GPR. Um, I just think the carbon GPR end can that I had on the black one of these looked nicer, sounded nicer. I just think, generally speaking, it was a nicer exhaust. And I've got, I'm a bit of a fanboy when it comes to GPRs. What else? Uh, carbon fibre fender extender there. It's got RNG fork protectors there, the Brembos. I mean, this has got stainless steel hoses as well. This, just like the black one, stops on a dime. I love the brakes on these things. That's one of the reasons I do love these bikes, is the brakes are fucking awesome. And this one's got ABS, which is another reason I wanted it, because obviously, as we know, ABS commands more money. And there's a little ring down there, and it all works lovely jubbly. I'm going to change the front light bulbs as well, uh, but I don't have any of the 50 watt bright, super bright um, side light bulbs, but I'm going to do those like I did in the on the black one, rather, uh, just to modernise it just ever so slightly. And it's got some rad guards down there as well. And it's got these lovely tri proper Triumph branded LED indicators front and back with the RNG tail tidy as well. Somebody spent a fair amount of money on this, don't get me wrong. They, as I said, put the tail tidy on. I love the way the indicator's going to splay up slightly, just, just ever so slightly there, you know, and they work beautifully, of course. Oxford heated grips, I assume these are the new generation because mine on the last bike I had, which was the SX, that went 25, 50, 75, 100. This goes 30, 40, 50, 75, 100. So I'm assuming this is the new incarnation of the same kind of thing. And it works, so that's fine by me. What else? X amount of padding all around, as I said, on here. And it's also got these lovely Triumph branded brake reservoirs as well, front and back. Oh, there should be a back one. There it is, just sitting down there, all anodized. Not cheap, don't get me wrong, they are not cheap. And bar end mirrors, you know I'm a fan of them, especially on the Triumphs. And this has got the proper Triumph ones, which are well over 100 quid a set. Um, the difference between the Triumph ones and the cheap, chinky, chonky Chinese ones is these don't move. They are rock solid. You know, you can put those in a position you want them and they stay there. There's no problem with that at all. Shorty levers, um, I think these are just the cheap Chinese ones, if I'm honest, because they don't have that kind of bend up thing that you get on some of them. Um, so I don't think that they're um, overly expensive, should we say. Let's see if we can find any more extras on here while we're looking. The guy did actually... Um, have the rear pegs off but he brought them down with him I've got the original exhaust as well and he's also sending me down the original mirrors the single-sided paddock stand for it and um, it's also got the RNG uh, 
what do you call that hub protector down the back um yeah he's got the single-sided swing arm paddock stand thingy that's coming down in, in a box as well and a couple of other little bits and bobs so that's going to be bloody useful he's got a new chain and sprocket as well I mean, there's so much. Somebody has spent a lot of time and a lot of money getting this just the way they wanted it, and I've just picked it up cheaper than it should have been and effectively got myself a bargain. Now, wheel stripes, I was going to go with the same wheel stripes as I did on the black one, where this Triumph Racing, you know I've used this kind of set before, 9 99 off eBay. You get three for each wheel, or each side of each wheel, as it were. Now, because of the black and white accent on this, I decided to do something slightly different. I bought the set again, and all I've used is just literally the Triumph Racing. Because of the black and white, if you see where I'm going with that this whole kind of like you know stormtrooper style you know which I, I kind of like that I think it's cool um, but that's all I've done so far I've given it a wash and a polish and I've put the stickers on uh, there was something else I did which I can't remember off the top of my head now uh, no I think it was just by the bloody rear tire to be honest because as I said that needs changing but it, it was 46 quid for the pair so i'll sell one front one you know virtually new mitch and pile that should go for 20 quid shouldn't it um which means i'll get a back tire for 25 quid ish and my guy jason at jp motorworks uh him some blazy he'll fit that probably for 25 quid so 50 quid as opposed to 100 quid for a tire and i know it's a cheap bodge way out of it but if it lasts me the summer that's fine because i may well keep this for the summer because i don't remember ever buying a bike twice and I liked the black 1050 speed triple so much, I bought a white one. It's as simple as that. I'm a massive fan of these bikes. I mean, I can sit on this quite happily. 70 miles an hour I was doing on the way here. Three and a half thousand revs. It doesn't even feel like the bike's, you know, straining at all. You just, you could go like that all day. And he also gave me some um, saddlebags that came with it. Bronco, I think they're called, something like that. And they just obviously, the, the, the Velcro ones, just soft bags that sit either side. And he gave me a set of those, which I was considering buying because um, I wanted to go touring, but I didn't want to go to the trouble of buying proper Triumph branded um, saddlebags, as it were. So that's saved me a job and it'll give me the experience of what it's like to actually have not panniers but just soft luggage on the back of a triumph 1050 because he's actually been touring on this in the six thousand six thousand seven thousand miles he's done on it he said he went to spain with his mates um, last year i think it was and he used those bags with a rucksack and a tank bag maybe or a little kind of bag on the back seat kind of here-ish maybe um and he said it was brilliant you know he just cruised along all day long on that um, no discomfort whatsoever um so that's an option for me whereas the Z1000SX wouldn't have been an option because I'd have had to get hard luggage for that, and that's a fucking fortune. It's about six, seven hundred quid for that set. So, so wind up that kind of story. I've got some soft luggage that goes over the back of here. Um, so if I want to go away for a weekend, at least up to Bristol to see my friends, I can do that. Just shove a rucksack on, a couple of bags at the side, a pair of jeans, a couple of pairs uh, uh, pants, you know, t-shirt, whatever. Uh, jobs are good. Um, so what else? I mean, I think that's pretty much it. As I said, it wasn't going to be a long video because I've already reviewed the bike um, in a previous video. Um, it's just what I wanted to show you guys what I'm up to at the moment. And, you know, if you're willing to wait and be patient and negotiate with people, you can get some really good bargains. I mean, I don't think I will ever know what happened to this bike in reality. It could well be the fact that the clocks were stolen. It could be absolutely 100% honest and the clocks were stolen outside his house or outside work, I think it was. And he claimed them on his insurance, but it didn't flag up on the bike insurance per se. Um, I don't know whether what kind of insurance he had um but that as i said that did ring alarm bells with me slightly because i thought if you claimed anything on the insurance then you had a record of that um, on the bike but maybe if it's not passed i don't know i mean maybe somebody can chime in and let me know what they think about that whole situation would you have taken a chance on this at the money i mean as i said these are five grand plus bikes and i got it for about six seven hundred quid cheaper than it should be um when you can put all the parts into it as well there's probably a grand's worth of parts on that so would you have taken a chance on this? Would you have got it? Would you have just thought, well, fuck it, you know, let's just have a go at this? I mean, I didn't buy it to make money, don't get me wrong. I bought it because I love the bike. If I make any money on it, fantastic. But I don't really think I want to sell this unless it's for something that I've been looking for, i.e. the R90 BMW, which is something I really want to have a go on. And I know the prices of bikes are going up now, and this channel's all about budget bikes. But I will keep 
doing the budget stuff because I, li- I don't mind having two bikes. That's fine. You know, having some, something slightly more expensive and then something, you know, around about the 1,000 to 3,000 mark. You know, that's not an ideal plan for me. If I could make it happen, I'd keep this all summer and then just keep buying budget bikes. Um, you know, and if I can make any money on that, you know, that's great. That'll pay for a trip abroad. Fantastic. But it's not an ideal world, is it? You know, so we just got to wait and see what happens with that. But I just wanted to give you guys a heads up to what I'm doing and introduce you to my Stormtrooper the 2012 Speed Triple 1050 with around about 13,000 miles with the clock change. But as I said, if you've got any thoughts on that whole situation, just let me know because I'm curious. I mean, as I said, would you have taken a chance on this stunning looking black and white combo bike? It almost reminds me of the two-tone, you know, the mods kind of era, that kind of colour scheme. And I like that because I was around then, obviously. Anyway, that's it. Comments below, please, guys. If you haven't subscribed, then do so because I try to get a video out every month. And uh, the subscribers are around about 1,300 now, which is fantastic. You know, I love that. Great. Anyway, I'm off for a ride because it's now the beginning of May, the first bank holiday in May. The sun's out, so I'm going to take this little beauty out for a little blast. And uh, I'll catch up with you guys in the next video. All right. Take care now.